in talking about food webs, we want to talk about and, and even these two different kinds of food webs, the classical food web as well as the um, microbial food web. There's kind of two different ways that we can talk about food webs and look at their dynamics in time. We've just looked at sort of the, the players of the two food webs, the classical food web and the microbial food web. Now let's look at how they may change in time. In locations in the world ocean where conditions are rather unvarying, such as the central gyres of the oceans, or many places in the tropical oceans, where it's day in, day out, fairly same amount of sunlight, pretty much stratified water column, pretty much same supply of nutrients or low supply of nutrients. That leads to conditions that are very much the same and homogeneous through time. That may lead to what we call steady state food webs. However, a lot of what we've talked about in the class and a lot of what's been studied as well are what are called transitional food webs, conditions changing, sudden stratification of the ocean as part of the seasonal cycle, upwelling happening and, and generating stimulating phytoplankton by the availability of biologically important nutrients. That generates what's called a transitional food web. As it turns out, it looks like the microbial food web operates continuously um, in what we call a steady state. So we're not defining two different kinds of food webs here. We're really defining the dynamics of the two different food webs. But in some senses, we'll see the steady state, the sort of constant environmental conditions, tends to favor the microbial food web. It seems to chug along just fine uh, without any changes in its environment. On the other hand, upwelling, stratification of the water column following deep mixing, any of those kind of wind mixing, turbulence, those kinds of things tend to favor the transitional food web. So this food web will kick up and then it will kick down. Okay, And so that's really, we're talking about the dynamics of food webs here, even though in some sense you may also consider that the microbial food web is more of a steady state food web, where the classical food web is more of a transitional one. It's not around all the time. It's not functioning all the time. It happens as events in the ocean, as physical and chemical events drive it and stimulate it. Okay. So the structure and function of ocean food webs then is really dictated by the environment. And these two different kinds of food webs that have been identified operate in different manners. They have different players, but it's really the conditions that determine whether one food web um, is dominant or the other. Um, as we study these with, in greater detail, we learn that there's probably a continuum between the two food webs. Um, a higher level of interaction between the two food webs, and these are really sorts of um, details for oceanographers. But the important thing I think for you to remember here is that there are two different kinds of food webs. They react differently to ocean conditions. They may be present in greater or lesser numbers depending on ocean conditions. And as we learned previously, the dynamics are going to change from top-down control to bottom-up control to wasp waste control. And the transfer efficiency, the trophic efficiency from one food level to the next may be um, altered as a result as well.